based on what I've seen, as expected, you guys sort of, you know, ate that for breakfast, because it's stuff you've seen before, and it's not complicated. Even if you've seen it before, like the calculations are easy too, you're pretty much just adding these up, yeah? Um, I just want to point out, there's one little thing you might not have noticed. If, for example, you get a question like this, and uh, you don't get asked the circumference, you get told the circumference, and then you have to work out, say, what's the radius, okay? Now, because if you know the radius, you can work out the circumference, you can go in the opposite direction as well, right? So in case you've already encountered this question, how would you set this out? Like, you can obviously go to your calculator and get a number out of it, but what would you write to communicate, like, I know what I'm doing before you reach for the calculator? What could you do? Very good. So I would usually start off, uh, you know, my sentence by saying, 2 pi r, that's, um, that's where I'm going to put my numbers in. But r is the thing I'm trying to work out, okay? So if the circumference is 2 pi r, and if I want a diameter, I'd use the other form. All I need to do to get r by itself is, well, what do I do? I'm solving this equation. What am I going to do both sides? Yeah, I'm going to divide through both sides, yeah? So divide this by 2 pi, and divide this by 2 pi. Does that make sense? Now, the icky thing about this, you cancel, cancel, but as you know, if you, when you're playing with your calculator, pi is a messy number, right? So you're going to get something a bit gross out of this. You're going to get r equals, can someone actually punch in 15 divided by 2 pi for me? Uh, 2 point, wait, how many does Give it Give me, two, uh, I don't know, 5 or 6? 2.38732. 8732? Yeah. Yeah, okay, dot, dot, dot. Now, at this point, usually the question will say, um, can you give me a certain number of decimal places? And that's fine. Mm -hmm. However, based on what we looked at in MM1, even if the question didn't say that, you could work out how far to approximate it, right? How am I going, how far am I going to approximate on something like this? Think about it, think about it. That 15 centimeters that was measured, right? I've written that it's 15 centimeters but it might not be 15 centimeters. What's the range of the accuracy of that? What do you think? I've, I've given it to you in whole centimeters. So what you can assume is that the limit of reading or whatever I use to measure thing out is a centimeter, right? So that means this really could be like 14.5 or 15.5, yeah? So that's the error that I'm gonna introduce. But that error comes along for the ride when I work out the radius, right? So what do you think I should round this off to? Wait, so yeah. Sorry, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, never mind, it would be 15.5 divided by 2 pi. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I'm saying is, for example, suppose it was 15.49, okay. right? Okay. Then on my measuring instrument, I would have rounded it down to 15. Yeah. So yes, you're correct, okay? Um, it looks like I'm going to the nearest half a centimetre, right? That's the real accuracy that I have. So I would do the same here. So like I said, the questions you're actually going to encounter in the exercise, they're probably going to say two decimal places, two significant figures, something like that. But without it, if you were actually measuring this out and you wanted to know, I think it would make sense to say two and a half. Okay, because that retains the same level of accuracy that you started with. It was just kind of implied here. Does that make sense? Okay, anyway, that was just as an aside because you'll sometimes get the question reversed for you. Let's have a look at these three examples which will take you into 5b. And it's not crazy, but it's just a little bit of extra thought that's required to work out the proof of these shapes. Okay, so have a look. Uh, this is a sector. So the sector is the name that we give to when you've got a circle and you divide out some part that meets at the center of the circle. Okay, so if this were a whole circle, if you had this kind of thing, what would you do to work out the circumference? Or the perimeter, I should say. What would you do? Yeah. Uh, well, I would pretend like that was like... If it were included. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. What would I do? What would I write down? I'd say, yeah, Chris? Oh, yeah. uh, you would work it out and divide it by four. Okay, so if I wanted to work out this part, that's just a quarter of the circle, right? So that's just a quarter of that whole circumference. Yeah. If I wanted the whole circumference, it would just be... 2 pi r, right? So 2 times pi times 3, that's the radius, right? Now remember Chris just said that's a quarter, yeah? So the part that I want is the rest of it, with it which is not one quarter, but three quarters. So I'm gonna go three quarters of the circumference. And that'll give me this round part, this curved bit around the edge, okay? That's really good, that's the first thing to settle. I've only got part of the circumference, so three quarters of it, that's what I'm going down. 
but there are bits that are missing, right? What do I add to that to get the whole thing? Okay, so there's an edge here that's three, and there's another edge here that's three. So the entire perimeter is this plus two lots of three, and that'll give me the actual number I want. Can someone tell me what that is? Any takers? Here, my monkey, you're around without a calculator, so I don't know what to do. So help me out. Someone got a number? Uh, 20, 20, point. 20 point. 20 point? How many decimal places do you want? Give me two. One, four. One, four? Should have written it like this. Okay, so, not that complicated. When you have a look at other shapes, sometimes the pieces that you want, like the curved perimeter around there, um, they're, they're separated out. So if you have a look at this, which is roughly the dimensions of a running track, right? When you look at the bits, you've got this round part over here and this round part over here, but despite the fact that they're separate, if you combine them, then all you would get is just, well, what would you get? A circle. You'd just get a circle, right? So you can consider those pieces and then add on the straight edges, yeah? So again, here, I'm gonna say, perimeter equals, now I could use two pi r, that'd be fine, but look at this 70 meters that I've got. How does that relate to the circle? It's the, that diameter. I'm it's the diameter. So instead of using two pi r, I'm going to just use pi times whatever that diameter is, which in this case is 70. Okay? That takes care of the curved parts. Then what do I add onto that? To so get the entire thing. Two lots of 100. Two lots of 100. That's it. I'm not even going to worry about what the number is because I'm confident you guys know what to do with your calculators from there. Okay? Last one, you'll start to get to shapes where they combine things in weird ways. So this is a semicircle attached to a semicircle. Let's think about this carefully. Um, I've got actually a few different parts that I want to think through, so I'm going to number them, just so I can keep track of them. I'll call that big curved part the first length. I'll call this radius the second length. And then I've got a smaller semicircle over here, so I'll call that one the third length. Okay? Let's go through them one by one. I'm actually going to use my numbers. What's the first part going to be? How do I work this out? You like divide it into two shapes? Yeah. So you divide your semicircle bit and then your... Okay, cool. So, so this semicircle bit, right? Remember how we had three quarters of a circumference over there? Here I'm going to have half of a circumference. So I'm going to go half times, and I have the radius, so I'm going to use the radius one. Two pi r, ah, which, is, which is eight. Yeah? Is that okay? So you can see in this case, uh, in fact, having written this out before I got to my calculator, the half and the two, they cancel. So this is eight times pi, which is like, uh, I don't know, 25, 26. Someone's gonna give me that number. I'll just write down eight pi for now, okay? And you can work out what the decimal is. The second part is just eight. So I'm not even gonna do any working for that. Let's do this last one. This is a semicircle, uh, again, but it has a different radius from the big one. That's what makes it a smaller semicircle. So how would you like me to work out just this um, length or oh, key. Any suggestions? Can you just do uh, wait, the area for that certain bit or the perimeter? Uh, I'm doing perimeter. Oh, Still yeah. in perimeter length. Then, yeah. wait, what's the perimeter? Okay, so it's going to be, okay, it's, it's a semicircle, right? Oh, so right. I've got to be half of yeah, something, right. right? And the half of something I've got is... Two pi r. The, the diameter. So you, you've got choices, right? Um, again, you can use the same 2 pi r that we just used. Or that 8, right? It's the diameter of the little circle. Yeah? Hmm. So I can just use, um, what do I write it? <laughs> I can just use this form, right? Pi times the diameter. So I'm gonna go half times pi times the diameter. So that's four pi, because half times eight is four. So now if I complete this, I can say therefore the perimeter, or P if you just remember that, is equal to, uh, you've got a decimal for this, but I don't. Um, eight pi was the big semicircle, eight, was that little straight edge there, and then 4 pi was the small semicircle. And then out you'll evaluate your number with your calculator. Okay. So what do we take from all of these? Number one, just think carefully about the different pieces you've got. So you've got a curved part, you've got straight parts, make sure they're all accounted for here. And secondly, if you ever encounter a question like this, and they sometimes get a little more finicky than that, if there's lots and lots of pieces 
give them labels, and that way you won't miss any, and you'll be systematic, and there'll be none forgotten as you go all the way through. Okay.